And so looking at um, the background history behind CVS and why CVS has um, kind of come to be a low-tech communication system. Um, while working in life skills setting, um, I had children that were working on, working with um, or using low-tech communication systems such as static core vocabulary boards, and I'm a huge proponent of low-tech boards, static boards. Um, I had children using um, picture-based communication systems, some form of picture exchange, whether it was or was not following a specific protocol, uh, some sort of picture exchange, as well as individuals on dynamic display devices. Uh, and a lot of my kids were developing splinter communication skills. Um, I had kids developing really consistent ways to make a request for a preferred item, or I had kids who had kind of been over-therapized to make a request using a carrier phrase. So, I want goldfish, I want iPad, I want, um, I want gummy bears, whatever that might be, um, to the point where that I want became represented as one word. Um, and as language therapists, we know that um, there are many parts of speech and that these parts of speech can be represented with individual icons, individual photos, um, but we also neurologically want to represent words individually, um, both receptively and then to facilitate expressive output. So a lot of my kids were developing splinter communication skills. Um, if you have the background of being in SLP, you know that there are a wide range of functions of communication, which we're going to talk about this morning, um, and there are a variety of parts of speech. Uh, a lot of my kids also lacked consistent locations for core words. So um, if they had a low-tech binder and they were doing some form of picture exchange, um, icons were kind of located haphazardly without organization throughout their book. There would be an icon for following directions. Put on your shoes next to a picture of a goldfish cracker. And, there, and there were, the child may not have, um, would not have a consistent way to find the word. Um, and so by having icons maintained in a relatively consistent location, which is a big focus of CVES, the idea is to really decrease cognitive load. How do we make it efficient for, our, for an individual to communicate? And then again, looking at functions of language, many of my kids developed splinter communication skills. When children develop communication skills from birth, they use a wide range of functions to communicate. Um, so if a child's asking for goldfish crackers and they can say, I want goldfish, or I see goldfish, they should also be able to ask questions. Where my goldfish? Eat goldfish, more goldfish, put goldfish here. We can talk about goldfish in different ways. So the intended purpose of CVS is to support behavioral regulation, social interaction, and joint, in, in, in joint attention, to help facilitate spontaneous and novel utterance generation at an individual's language level, to de decrease an individual's cognitive load by having removable and returnable icons in a consistent location, and it's developed to, to act as a standalone communication system or language teaching tool. So with CVS, the goal of CVS is to create communication loops by the communication partner providing feedback using icons in the system or a communication partner initiating a message with the individual using CVES. We're teaching both reciprocal roles of speaker and listener. So we're using CVS as an alternate to a static board, um, which static boards, they're accessed through direct selection. Um, so with CVES, an individual pulls off individual icons and give those, gives those to a communication partner to direct their language towards a person, but they can also receive information in that modality as well. There's a very significant difference between touching an icon on a static board and pulling off an icon and giving it to someone else. And you create a dynamic relationship when you do that. So if an individual taps or touches the words, I go, or if they tap and touch those words, I go, repetitively on a static board, have they stopped to either gain your attention or have they stopped to reference you? Are they pointing and isolating to those words, turning their body towards you and making a reference to indicate they have intent? Are they looking down at their static board and tapping those words? Um, or is an individual tapping a, tapping a word on their static board after they've been prompting, prompted? You tap the word, I go, or I eat, they tap the words, I go, or I eat. Does that demonstrate communicative intent, or were they imitating you? So CVES was designed as an alternate to a static board for this reason, uh, to naturally encourage a child to use language and direct it towards somebody else. 
When we look at autism in particular, and, and we could see this in other conditions as well, um, we have significant deficits in auditory, we have significant deficits in tactile, proprioception, and vestibular systems, especially our proprioceptive systems. If you look at the kids that you work with with autism, most of them have significant deficits in motor planning, and that's relating to their deficits in proprioception. Most of them have something called ligament laxity in their joints, they're hypermobile. And so as a result of that, their understanding of where their body is in space, their fingers are in space, their movements in space are significantly impaired. Um, and so as a result, it's best practice to provide intervention that's multi-sensory. That means providing a system, whether high or low tech, that has different features. Features like tactile feedback, um, features like auditory feedback, providing auditory, um, in order to account for deficits. So when we're looking at multi-sensory learning, um, we're looking at providing information to a child through multiple channels or multiple sensory systems to account for deficits in the others. So if I know a child has deficits in auditory processing, I'm not gonna rely on just that system alone to teach them language. I'm gonna teach to their visual system and their tactile system and their proprioceptive system. And how do I do that? Um, I need to use the strengths of their good senses to account for deficits in the other sense. And so by doing that, I'm creating multiple representations in the brain as opposed to one. So I can do that by using a system that's multi-sensory. And today we're talking about CVES, that's why we're here today, so we're gonna focus on that. Um, but if we're looking at um, how do I apply to the sensory system, I'm gonna look at every sense and see how can I use the features of that system um, to account for deficits.